support, started to notice a uh, four-time U.S. team pilot, uh, been on the back of the rope about seven, 8,000 times, and uh, probably 2,000 fighter jets. We're here today to talk about some misconceptions and some co-pilot safety regarding the Schweitzer tow hook release system. Today we'll talk about some accident statistics, some improper installation and maintenance issues, along with a few other psychological issues we found going through. Before we get to the actual pull test that we did on that Cessna 180, I just want to talk to about some misconceptions that people might have about uh, actual tow upsets. In my growing up at Sky Sailing, we've never had an upset that was unreleasable by any means. Uh, I've been involved with many with students that, that uh, got us way out of position, up, down, left, right, doesn't matter. I've also been in the tow plane training. Uh, all of our new tow pilots, we kind of go through a little bit of an upset training where the glider purposely will pull up on our tail just to make sure that our new tow pilot doesn't kind of get comfortable and forget where the handle is or forget that they have a handle and just try to hold on. So proper tow pilot training is a huge thing that we do. Uh, whether it has saved anybody, uh, we'll never know because a tow hook works correctly. But a common misconception is that when a glider goes high, the tow plane is going to stay straight and you're going to be 45 degrees above the tow plane. That's not possible. The tow plane is going to start diving. That's the whole problem with this tow, uh, tow upset is the tow plane is going to start diving into the ground. So the tow plane is probably going to be somewhere along this line. So the, tow, the glider might be 45 degrees according to the horizon above it, but you're not going to be much more than 20 or 30 degrees above that tow plane for very long. You can go rocketing up and get to 45 degrees, but as soon as you start putting tension on that tow rope, the tow plane's gonna start diving. I've been involved with enough of them during training to know you get about one or two seconds up there at 45 degrees before the tow plane's going down and you're no more than 30 degrees. And the tow hook works just fine, as you'll see in our next video. My personal Cessna 180 aircraft on it, we've installed, per the FCC, a brand new Schweitzer tow hook. Um, Today, before we get to the video of us load testing this release mechanism at high angles, I want to talk about a few things. In order for this system to work, this cable release mechanism must be lined up with the J-hook. There was a few accidents that we'll get into where this hook system had turned and the shear force on the release did not allow the hook to release. So we'll get into that. Another item I want to talk about is installation and maintenance. Although it doesn't specifically say it in the STC, you should pin or weld this hook so it cannot rotate if you have the bolt style mechanism installed on your aircraft. One other thing of note is often I've seen this clevis pin break and be replaced by an A and 3 bolt because the repair is simply easier to do than to braze in a new clevis pin. An experience I had as a tow pilot with a banner was the two inch ring had actually hung up on the bolt head and after the banner was released and the mechanism worked, the ring continued to stay attached and the pilot had to land with the banner. So if you are gonna repair these, please make sure you use a clevis pin. The part numbers can be seen and ordered at KNL Soaring on their website. Okay, so as you can see, the aircraft's completely disassembled uh, for annual maintenance and a bunch of other uh, things I'm modifying on the aircraft. But what we did is I had the standard system uh, release handle installed in the center console. I've done this to two other Cessna 180s. Um, and we used this baggage scale as kind of a quick litmus test as to how much physical force it actually took. And one thing to note is I can only wrap the strap right ahead of or just behind the red handle so I actually had less mechanical advantage um, than I would had I actually been pulling on it on the red knob itself. It only took about 35 pounds of force at the full weight we dared to try without breaking the aircraft completely or injuring ourselves. So we just got done load testing this thing. We, uh, we're just above 50 degrees, which we already talked about inside, is gonna be impossible to get to, and we put 1,000 pounds of force on it. When we started getting above 1,000 pounds of force, we started actually bending this bracket. The STC doesn't give you a ton of information on how to build this bracket, so when I welded it up, I actually uh, gusseted it down here and, and made sure this was gonna be the strongest part of the uh, hook. We also used the roll pins here. We didn't weld it. Uh, 
weld it like we had talked about. But it won't go side to side, and the force we put on this hook pulled this up and was bending this entire steel plate. This steel plate is a whole lot thicker than it actually needs to be as well. This is the tow rope we use at Sky Sailing. It's a 1,200 pound breaking strength, the same as this hook. There is no way this rope is gonna bend this steel. It's just impossible. So the amount of force we just put onto this and we got about 40 pounds of pull force on the hook and it released just fine. It didn't leave it scored, didn't round anything out. The hook worked beautifully, but we bent this steel plate. The glider's not gonna do that. Okay guys, so uh, it's been a few days since I was at the airport attempting to break my own personal aircraft. Um, what I did is I took what we found and reviewed these findings with uh, a bunch of friends uh, cross country in the soaring community. These are a couple of DPEs, some CFIGs, tow pilots, other AMPs. And we came up with uh, kind of some great things to consider uh, for safer towing operations. So uh, what I'm going to do in this video is touch on some accidents, uh, some personal experiences, swipes or tow hooks in general, and what we can do better as a soaring community to improve the overall safety of tow pilots in our sport. So starting with the accidents, I reviewed 78 uh, tow plane accidents from 1983 until present day, of which resulted in 20 fatalities. And I've broken them down into kind of sections for you. So what we have, we have about 25 landing accidents. Three of them were fast and long. Two of them were tailwheel shimmy. Uh, one resulted in a fatality, and I'll go back to this in a minute, but both of them uh, were low time tailwheel pilots. And one was a hard landing by, I believe, a Cessna 182. So fast and long, first of all, guys, we can always go around. Uh, my mindset when I'm landing an aircraft is I'm always going around until I'm not. It's not the other way around. I am not landing minded. I am go around minded. And I almost learned that the hard way landing off airport, my personal aircraft. Um, so always go around. Uh, you may need to use the brakes. Initial tailwheel instructors, you're probably going to disagree with me here, but uh, you know, nearly 4,000 hours of tailwheel, 10,000 toes. Uh, the dirty little secret they don't tell you is sometimes you got to use the brakes in your tail dragger to keep it on a runway, and that may that may be the uh, solution to those tailwheel shimmies. And everyone says tailwheel pilots, the most important thing is the rudder. And while I won't disagree. Don't discount the advantages you get of adverse yaw from holding that wing into the wind. Not only is it holding the wing down, but it's also helping you help yourself stay straight down the runway. So we're using that down aileron to keep us from weather veining into the wind, using adverse yaw to our advantage. Uh, the next little category I came up with was fuel exhaustion. One was unusually high fuel consumption, which I actually personally experienced at one point in a 172. I had 20 gallons of gas, 20 minute flight, and the engine quit right as I was in the flare. I was pretty lucky. Uh, Pawnee drivers. Many of the reports mentioned the pilot using the fuel gauge. Said, well, I checked the fuel gauge and yada, 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 and the engine quit. Um, and there's a lot of related factors with these, and these should be those little mental cues that kind of break the chain for you. And they were things in the reports like, well, I had done 12 toes, or I had been towing for over two hours. And those should have been your cues for you to go ahead and stop and get fuel. Um, I personally rebuilt the fuel uh, indicators on Pawnees. They're not a terribly accurate instrument. Uh, carry a watch, use the watch. Uh, mechanical. So the next category. We had 11 mechanical accidents. Uh, one was a fatality where simply cotter pin, castle nut fell off and the bolt fell out of the elevator horn, um, which resulted in a fatality. Two were gear collapses. Uh, three were just simple power loss on takeoff, kind of the rope break of the tow pilot. Uh, and then we had some others, which were pretty interesting. Um, now keep in mind these accidents span from your low time pilot to above 16,000 hours. Uh, one was flying into IMC, just going from airport A to B after re uh, retrieve and um, resulted in a fatality, very high time pilot. 
had some accidents taxiing, training with fatalities, not even towing gliders. Uh, one was a takeoff well above that aircraft's demonstrated crosswind limits. And then we had two that were mid-air accidents, one involving a uh, Cirrus and another involving a helicopter. So, and then kind of the, the meat and potatoes of what we're interested in as tow pilots, and we're talking about swipes or hooks not releasing, supposedly. And so uh, there were eight of these, which I call gliders high, tow pilot didn't release, or unknown factors. And these were all fatality accidents. And I'm going to go through these individually. So the first one I came across, the glider was high. It was apparently due to a dust level. Unknown why the pilot didn't release. Unfortunately, a lot of these accidents don't mention the tow hook type. And the Pawnee had crashed. The second fatality was a Cessna. And it looks like it was medical impairment through toxicology reports and some other resources. Uh, but the tow pilot made a non-standard right-hand turn after takeoff. Realized the mistake. Did the quick course reversal, got slack in the rope, the glider pilot released, and the tow plane continued in a diving left turn. It had crashed. Uh, little towing tip, new tow pilots, old tow pilot. If you're going to reverse course, level the wings, give your glider pilot a second or two so they can swing out and watch out of the wing tip or get outside the turn, whatever your procedure is. Don't just whip from a left to a right or vice versa. It's a good way to put a lot of slack in the rope quick. Uh, okay, moving on. Number three, a Super Cub. So the tow plane, uh, for some reason on takeoff, pitched up. The glider saw this happening, released. The Cub stalled and crashed. And this is one of the few ones where the NTSB notes the tow hook type. And it was a Schweitzer tow hook, but it was bent 30 degrees to the side. So it had obviously rotated, which from earlier, you guys know, we don't want the hooks to rotate. They need to be tight, welded, pinned, secured somehow to the bracket. Um, the next was a Pawnee. Similar thing, it pitched up, the glider released, and the aircraft spun in. Uh, accident number five was a call air. The glider got high, the glider released, and the tow pilot from 350 feet in a relatively level attitude managed to still spin the aircraft in, resulting in a fatality. Um, and we'll come back to these in just a minute. Number six, it was a high glider uh, at 20 to 30 feet. NTSB wrote their usual no attempt to make a release uh, in the report. And the reality is sometimes you just have bad luck and there just isn't enough time to pull a release uh, regardless of the release mechanism. Um, and then uh, number seven, a Pawnee high glider, no attempt to use the release. The system was mentioned, this is a real and guillotine system, and the guillotine was, uh, there just appeared to be no attempt to activate the guillotine. And the next one was similar, uh, a scout. Uh, the pilot used the guillotine far late in the accident sequence and simply didn't have enough time with the glider being high to pull out of the dive. Um, this particular accident had some surveillance video and uh, I had personally chatted with the NTSB investigator about this accident, and it looks again like a long delay on the tow pilot's part uh, for getting rid of the glider. So we'll talk about a few things. Let's go back to these two that spun in, and I want to talk about something that was just sort of brought up, food for thought, on symbiotic responses. Um, and this came up with a friend of mine, DPE, glider, cross-country racing pilot, and uh, firearms enthusiast. And we talk about shooting a pistol single-handedly. And when we're shooting the pistol, in order to grip the pistol tighter, we'll take our hand we are not holding the pistol with, and we'll squeeze it. And we get a sympathetic response that squeezes the pistol hand even farther or tighter. And I think there's something to be said that a tow pilot's hauling back on the stick with this high glider, hauling back on the release mechanism, and they have a sympathetic response. The glider releases, and they forget to release the pressure on the aircraft, on the controls, and they're kind of just spinning the aircraft in from what seem like completely recoverable scenarios, which is very unfortunate. So stay in the game, fly your airplane, you get rid of that glider, the rope breaks, the glider releases, whatever happens in that moment, 
get the nose on the horizon, just get yourself straight and level, take that momentary second, and uh, recover the aircraft. Um, all right, so moving on. So, so what do these accidents show us? Um, the data is not really showing a prejudice to any type of tow plane, uh, tow release mechanism, age of the pilot experience. It was pretty even across the board. And it's kind of showing us two main things. Um, one, the tow pilots aren't activating their release mechanism, either too late in the game or not at all. So I want you to mentally, I want you to think about that and yourself towing. Uh, and two, the pilots aren't flying their aircraft after the glider releases. You know, they have that startle response. Maybe their heart rate comes up. You need to uh, stay in the game, watch out for that sympathetic response. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of my experience here. Um, me personally, I'm over 16,000 hours, ATP rating, flown over 110 aircraft types, banner towing, glider towing, CFIG, backcountry, off airport, aerobatics, flying jumpers, airline pilot, and uh, tanker flying, aerial firefighting. Uh, I've been towing for around 20 years with over 10,000 tows. Um, I have had two glider releases where I released the glider high. These were both with Switzer tow hooks. Um, at my home glider port, we did uh, have an accident with a Pawnee where again, it was pointed towards the pilot too late to react to a glider that got high and the outside of a turn on takeoff. Um, but what should be noted is that the Schweitzer system high and outside the turn worked. The pilot just released too late in the game. And this is kind of what the military had some problems with early with their ejection seats is they just simply couldn't get military pilots to eject out of the aircraft in time. So let's do a little review of the Schweitzer tow hook system. Um, you know, this thing has really been demonized as a system that simply can't release when the glider's high and certain death and all that stuff. And, and it's simply not true. Um, if you go onto the SSAs, onto their soaring safety uh, page, you know, everyone says they don't release. And they've actually referred me to this page. And if you read the warning label, it says that they may not release. And this has been construed over the years to mean that you just simply can't release. There's no chance. Um, and I find it funny that Schweitzer gliders get high on tow, have similar angles and geometry, but somehow are able to release themselves when they get high. Um, kind of a side note, the hook's a little different, a little different friction coefficients and things like that. But uh, I digress. So when you're on the soaring safety page, uh, their own clip art, as Boyd kind of explained in the hangar there, shows the tow plane angle as the glider pulls the tow plane up. This angle, the tow plane, actually gets released, and it's just a normal straight force or not as ad advanced or a large angle as the initial upset uh, sequence begins. Um, so think of that for a little bit as well. So when we did the test of my personal aircraft, we were out there. We put about 1,100 pounds on the hook at 50-degree angle, and uh, I learned quite a bit under these test conditions. And I know a lot of you are going to say, okay, well, why didn't you do the full 1,200 pounds? And personally, I'm going to tell you, it was pretty scary. Uh, Boyd and I were out there with all this rope under tension. We've all seen the America's Funniest video where someone tries to pull a stump out with their truck and the, the stump comes flying out and hits the back of the window of the truck or does damage. So the, the, honestly, this was kind of a spooky test that we did. Um, and 1,100 pounds, we started to bend some things and we just sort of stopped it there because I think it's going to prove the point. Um, the system worked. All right, that was a lot of load. 50 degrees is beyond anything you could physically get to while in the air. Um, it would be beyond pretty much anything that's ever been reported uh, as far as the angle of the rope relative to the hook, not nose down of the aircraft or anything like that. So what this test actually did is it actually produced some more questions and answers. And, and this is where we went and mulled over that with some of my experienced friends all across the United States in our soaring community. 
Um, and so we heard these online stories, you know, oh, I pulled the release and nothing happened or the rope broke and it was scary or I couldn't get to the handle because of the G-forces. And we'll kind of circle back to that um, may not release. And I want to try to answer some of these why were these may not releases happening? And uh, we kind of came up with a few things that may be of interest. Uh, number one, when you release a glider under tension, it feels different. So we're used to, at the end of the day, my commercial operation I work at, we taxi by the office, we pull the release, we taxi the other end of the airport, we fuel it and park it for the night. Your operation may be a flyover, drop the rope, circle and land, or you might just have an inertia reel system where your, your hook is conveniently wound up inside your tow plane anyway. But it's gonna feel different. The release force is pretty light on your handle. And so subconsciously, what we're actually doing is negatively training ourselves for a proper response to a glider that's high on tow. It requires a lot more force on the handle. And so we're teaching ourselves an improper muscle memory. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Every time you taxi and you pull the release, it's the end of the day and you shut down and have your beer with your soaring friends. Uh, really think about that. And why, why does this feel different? Why, why? Yeah, the answer is the cable tension. So in my aircraft, I use a flight control cable, you know, either an eighth inch or a five sixteenths cable. And in my Cessna, my ailerons, for instance, uh, the cable is tensioned at 40 pounds. It's preloaded. And so what happens is when you go to release this cable under no tension, it's just a little click. When you go to release a glider that's high on you, it's a big pull. You've got to take up all that slack and all that cable stretch and get it tight before the hook begins to slide forward and unlatch itself. Um, I like to use thick cable as thick as I can for the tow release system for that purpose. I have seen some, and maybe yours has this, they're essentially a real narrow, almost 16th inch uh, skinny little cable that's gonna take up the load of releasing a glider. So really consider your equipment. Uh, in that case. And then the next thing we considered was the leverage required from your handle. So when we did this test, I used a standard Schweitzer handle, uh, it's bolt in the middle, you got about six inches to the knob at the top from the rotation point, and you've got about two inches below where the cable is hooked to the handle mechanism. And so from that, we were able to take our test, our pull force, and we were able to do some math uh, using a standard Schweitzer handle. And so if you're not using a standard handle, take some of this as food for thought into consideration with your aircraft or your club or your commercial operator's operation. So when we did the test, it took 35 pounds just below the red knob. And that was uh, five and a quarter inches from the bolt that holds the handle into the housing where the handle rotates. So 35 pounds at 0.4375 feet, that's five and a quarter inches, gave us a torque of 15.3 foot pounds, okay? And then we needed to see, well, what did that translate to at the other end where the cable is hooked to at the bottom end of this handle? So we took our 15.3 foot pounds of torque and divided it uh, by 0.5, or half a foot up at the handle. And that gave us 92 pounds is what the cable uh, had to pull at to release at that pretty exorbitant angle at 1,100 pounds of force. So again, I want you to consider, think about that 92 pounds on your little narrow 16th of an inch trim cable that you've decided to use for your installation. Uh, there's a new company out there, actually an old company, but a newer STC. It's based on the Schweitzer hook, uh, Pacific Aerial Tow Hooks. They use PATH for uh, like a short acronym. And it's based on the Schweitzer design. For all intents and purposes, it's a Schweitzer tow hook. Um, but the great thing is, since it's a recent certification, they had to go through a lot more testing uh, to acquire their STC for uh, their design. 
And what they ended up with was a fantastic table where they bench tested essentially the same mechanism where they had a uh, 20 degrees above the hook, zero degrees and 20 degrees below the hook. And they went all the way up to 1400 pounds and they listed the results or their uh, cable tension required to physically pull that cable um, on their web page, uh, Pacific Aerial Tow Hooks. And so basically kind of interpolating what they came up with, uh, with what we came up with, we're kind of in line. Uh, for instance, they're 1,200 pounds straight back. It took 60 pounds of force on the cable to get it to release. Um, unfortunately, they're more of a banner towing company. I don't think they're as familiar with glider towing. Um, their information on the glider towing probably could be improved, but their testing was a lot more in depth. Uh, okay, so why are these gliders getting high in the first place? That's the big question. Why even worry about releasing gliders when we could just fly them behind the tow plane? And the NTSB reports are showing the canopies are coming open. And I think we all know this. The canopies don't show themselves as unlocked until you get airborne or just before you're airborne or somewhere in that early, early stage of flight. Uh, student pilots, flight instructors, commercial pilots, tow pilots. Uh, I've been flying skydivers for over 12 years. And let me tell you, they leave the door open every time they jump out of the aircraft. The airplane will fly just fine missing a door, missing a canopy. It might cost you a couple of bucks and some damage and some repair, um, but just stay on your tow plane. It's gonna be windy, it's gonna be loud, there's gonna be some startle response. You have to fly your aircraft. It will fly just fine, even with some damage uh, behind the tow plane. There were some great reports on there where canopies flew off and the glider pilot was able to radio the tow plane and said, hey, let's just go around the pattern. And he stayed on tow and he got off downwind and landed the glider. And that's how these stories should be. But unfortunately, they're not all ending up like that. Uh, what I do personally as a CFIG, it's kind of fun for the student. We'll take a 33 up, doing maneuvers, whatever. We'll clear the airspace. I'll slow the glider way down. I'm flying the aircraft as an instructor, and I'll help my students open the canopy in flight, 35 miles an hour or something like that, really slow. It's enjoyable. It's fun. It drives home the point that the aircraft flies just fine with the canopy open, and we attempt to correlate that with some of these accidents and kind of I attempt to show my students uh, that it's not a big deal. Um, all right, so the other big reason, the advent of these GoPros, these small cameras, everyone wants to make a YouTube video, show their friends and family. Uh, I do it too at work. It's fun to see what aerial firefighting looks like from inside the cockpit. Uh, I'm not allowed to share them publicly. And honestly, I turn them on at 12 miles and I leave the camera alone. It's the last thing on my mind. Um, when cameras come out, pilots tend to kind of make poor decisions. So keep that in mind as well. I know as an operation, we get to charge customers for the video. It's a great little money maker to help keep your operation going. But really brief your pilots, your instructors on these things. They should be kind of the last priority in the whole deal. Um, so what can we do better? Release early, release often. Uh, chair fly some of these realities that I just talked about um, subconsciously training ourselves in a poor way for the, the reality that at some point you may release a glider under tension imagine being light in that seat I heard some people saying well it's hard to get to the handle and this obviously has nothing to do with the release system on your aircraft you know, I was light in the seat and I, I, I didn't expect my hand to feel the way it did or well I came out of the seat well, you might need to tighten your seatbelt. Make sure you're in your aircraft tight. Um, think of that cable stretch. That, that, that handle, that release point is going to be a lot further back in the pole than you're used to. Um, think about that teeny little cable you might have on your aircraft. Maybe consider installing a, a flight control quality cable. Um, like I said, when I did the static test, it felt noticeably different in those ways. Um, 
Think about your handle, your release handle itself. How much leverage is it providing? Is it a short little handle with the cable here and you don't have a lot of leverage? Is it six, seven, eight inches? Do you have a better moment arm on there? You may have to pull longer, but the forces might be easier. Um, is your Schweitzer tow hook, as we talked about, is it secure? Is it pinned? Is it welded? Um, if you don't want to weld on it, is it got some little metal tabs on it to kind of block it from rotating? Is there something there that really is going to take care of those unusual flight loads and keep your handle straight? Um, or your hook, rather. Uh, does your Schweitzer tow hook... Has it been repaired? Is the J-hook being held on by an AN3 bolt? Where I talked about that two inch ring getting hung up on the nut or the bolt head and you pull the release and it's unable to let go of the rope. Um, if you haven't, this is a really good thing. Go to k &L Soaring, uh, their webpage. They provide all kinds of things to the soaring community. One of the things on there under their documentation is they have material on what's involved on a daily inspection what's involved on a 100 hour, what's involved on the annual inspection of your tow system. Kind of some basic stuff, but I venture to say that not many tow pilots have, have been given the guidance where to go to look at that information. Uh, I want you to think about these sympathetic responses. You're pulling, you're pulling, pulling, the rope breaks, you pull the release, whatever happens, come back to neutral, fly your aircraft away. Um, don't go into some kind of accelerated stall scenario. Um, I know I talked about those two fatalities and the one accident that happened at my personal glider port. He was in the middle of entering a spin as he hit the ground. So think about that. It's not uncommon. Um, a couple other things we do. Me personally, this is what we teach at Sky Sailing. This is the way I was taught. Look and touch your handle before every takeoff. I want you to expect that glider to get high, even if it's your most experienced world champion racing pilot. I want you to expect them to get high, to get out of position. And I want you to be surprised when that 30,000 hour pilot miraculously managed to stay behind your tow plane on a perfect attitude and all that good stuff. So kind of a little paradigm shift in your thinking before you take off. Um, this is brought up to me by one of my kind of, we'll say, a group of friends here, and he uses the stick as a trigger point to release. When you're sitting on the ground, he's got full back stick because he's in a tail dragger. He goes forward about an inch, and that muscle memory point, that's his mental trigger to release the glider. So you're flying, they're boxing the wake, you're moving around, and all of a sudden you get to that point, and it's going to happen rapidly. Grab the release, pull the release handle. Okay? Um... You know, I had that. I think that's a great thing. That's something new I learned just recently as we kind of dove into this little project. Uh, my first release, I was a brand new tow pilot at a club. I released a very well-known, uh, very experienced glider pilot with a student that got high. And he, he kind of had a rub with me about it that I had released him. But the good thing was I was there to have the debate with him. Um, and it resulted the outcome was a guaranteed successful outcome. And that's kind of the point. So uh, I hope you got some uh, high value food for thoughts out of this low value production. Uh, be safe, be smart, and uh, help us keep our insurance rates down.